Well, it's another freezing cold day here. Looks like our springtime kind of decided not to continue. So I decided that I would come out to the shop and play around with tapers. And uh, I just finished up this uh, this little motorized gizmo for my compound. Um, I don't know if you remember back when. Uh, there we go. Back when I did the uh, the tailstock um, die holder, I needed to turn a Morse taper spindle. And uh, you know, so it fit in the tailstock. And the, uh, the problem I noticed is, is, you know, my lathe isn't the most rigid thing in the world. And uh, as I was turning the the taper, I was affecting the the um, the finish. Basically, the bottom line is. is uh, not as rigid as you would think. As a matter of fact, I guess I can show you. Okay. This is a tense indicator, and I'm just pulling on the tool post here. It's up against the uh, the taper thing that I'm trying to match, but you can see, I mean, it's moving a half a thou, maybe, maybe a thou if I really push on it. Which, you know, I mean, it's not bad for a hobby lathe. You know, if you're using the, uh, the auto feeds and stuff, it's not really an issue. But when you're using the compound, um, you know, your hand can influence it enough to affect the finish of the, uh product here. Now that's the arbor I turned last uh, for the tailstock. Now you can kind of see, I mean I had to kind of polish the heck out of this thing to get those lines out of there. Fits in the taper okay but just not so great. So anyways what I did is I made a little attachment for my lathe. It sits on the compound. It's basically an inverted U-shaped block that um, I bored out and stuck a motor in, a, you know, a gear motor. And inside of there is also the motor controller. And what this does is it allows me to control speed of this thing in either direction. You can get it hauling ass or get it crawling. And it's closed loop so no matter what the tool load is it's going to keep the speed that I set on that pot. And it's got a wicked high gear ratio so it's got plenty of power. I think that gear head is 266 to 1 and then there's another uh, I don't know, pick a number four, uh, four or so to one in that ratio. So it's you know it's a, got a beefy gear gear train on it. It just friction fits on here. This uh, set screws just a grub screw to keep the motor from rotating. The way you set the gear lash is to you know rotate the motor. The shaft's offset, so you can just basically turn the motor until you get the right gear tooth engagement. Um. This thing has a Palulu uh, motor driver controller in it, and uh, it runs off a wall wart right there. 18 volts. It's a 24 volt motor, so you know, it's not running full speed, but it's plenty fast enough for what we have to do. So, in any case, I figured I would go over how you match a taper. 
since I want to try this thing out. So what I've got in here is my lathe test bar. Now back about six months ago or so Tubal Cain did a video on aligning lathe tail stocks. And towards the very end of his video he came up with a really cool and clever idea. And what he did was he got uh, a drill arbor that matched his tail stock. In my case it happens to be a Morse 2. And uh, he turned the barrel of the drill end of it down to a known diameter. In my case I turned it down to 750 thousandths. So I have that part that fits in my tailstock. Also went out and got a Morse Taper 5 to JT3 adapter, which if I take the chuck off, it fits in my headstock. And at the same time, I turned that you can't see it because it's inside the chuck. I'm using this backwards for this particular video. It's an exact match to this taper, or this part that I turned. And I turned them at the same temperature. I was very careful. Uh, they are very close to the same diameter. So the idea being that you stick one in your headstock and one in your tailstock, and then you run an indicator between the two parts that you've turned and when the tail stalks on the line with the headstock the dial indicator will show no difference between the parts that you've turned. That turns out to be a great way to do things because these drill, I mean these these arbor things cost like next to nothing. I think, I think this one was like six bucks or something and that other one might have been like twelve or something. And then, you know, you got to order the soft ones so you can turn them. But um, in any case, what I'm trying to do here is match the Morse 2 taper for my tailstock. So I'm using this adapter that I built backwards. And what I did is I chucked up the turn section in my chuck. And I bopped this thing with a hammer until it was running true and then what I did is I installed the other thing you gotta do is you gotta make sure that this indicator is on center otherwise all this is for naught so you put the center in the tailstock and you run this indicator down to the point and you adjust this until this is exactly on center. And when I mean exactly, I mean exactly. Because if you're off either high or low, the taper will be incorrect as you sweep this. Okay, so what happens next here, get rid of this glare, try to anyways. What happens next here is you then sweep this back and forth across this sample taper until this me until this dial indicator doesn't move and if it moves you take a bopper that's a bopper and you start you know obviously this tail this compound is going to be somewhat loose you start banging this and you sweep back and forth for what seems like an eternity and pretty soon you get that error to zero. So let me set up the camera and try to get this thing in focus and all that kind of good stuff and I'll sweep this a couple times and show you how I got this thing correct. Alright, so got this thing as focused as it's gonna get and uh, We'll sweep this now. So, what I'm going to do here is move this thing down here and crank this bad boy in so we load the indicator, get it to zero. 
Okay, and now we're going to move. And this is the tenths indicator, so one minor division there is a ten thousandth of an inch. So there's a point of diminishing returns here. Yeah, I could sit here and bop this thing, you know, to within a ten thousandth, or, or actually it's pretty much within the 10,000th right now, but, um, you know, you're within the range of being able to file it at this point, so, you know, this is close enough for what I usually shoot for, but, um, you know, if it's moving a thousandth, forget it, your taper's not going to fit in the bore, um, you really have to get it this close. And like I say, I mean, if you push on this thing, you can see, you know, I'm pulling on it, I'm pushing on it. I got some, you know, I got some play here. My gibs are tight. So the obvious solution to this problem of this is to not touch it. And that's why I built this, this uh, compound drive attachment thing here. So uh, I'm going to take this test bar out of here and stick a piece of stock in there and uh, we'll see how close we can get to uh, matching my tailstock taper I know this uh, phase 2 adapter is uh, real close so we should, uh, we should be able to turn it no problems alright I'll be back in a, in a minute here